A wild Karen got arrested with a felony. Background. I'm a 35-year-old father of two boys. I have PTSD due to time overseas, and have the physical scars to match the mental scars. I have an incredible wife that knows me, and knows what situations I should avoid. My children are amazing, but this story revolves around my youngest son and my service dog. Jay, my youngest son, has autism and we share a special bond because some things that set him off also put my teeth on edge. Spike, my English bulldog, he's my service dog. He's well-trained, lazy, judgmental, and overall, uninterested in anything he can't eat. He's also very in tune to Jay and my emotions and will provide a distraction when we get overwhelmed. Basically, he's like oh you're stressed? Here, scratch my butt, you'll feel better and I'll get attention, it's a win-win. The story. My family recently moved to Texas. Because we now live very close to an amusement park, we got memberships. Shout out to the park for being amazing, when it comes to special needs. This particular park in Arlington, Texas, has a special program for autistic people. They have rooms set aside to chill it if you're overstimulated, so you can relax, go back out, get overstimulated again, and around and round you go. With Jay, we also don't have to wait in lines. This is a huge thing, and the cause of this story. The park has a pass that lets you skip most of the lines, and they charge an arm and a leg for this. However, with that pass, you still end up in a line of the hundreds of people that also have that pass. Jay gets no lines at all, we get a special pass, and we go in through the exit. The worker signs the pass, and we go on the ride. Jay has a favorite ride, the log ride. There has been days that we would ride the log ride over and over, then eat, we also have the food pass which we pay for, then go back to the log ride. On this day, T, my oldest, and Jay, wanted to go on the log ride. So we made our way to the exit, and left wife and Spike in the shade, because someone has to stay with him, and bulldogs plus rides don't mix. As we were going in the exit, a woman started screaming at us. I have absolutely no hearing on my right side, thanks high pressure wave, so didn't consider it worth turning my head to listen. Now because we ride this ride almost exclusively, the workers on this ride know us by name and sight. Jay even talks to them, which is rare. We go in, show the pass, sit and ride. This time though, Tabitha, I'll call her Tabitha because Karen is overused, the woman that was screaming at us as we were walking in through the out, made her way to where the speedy pass ends at the ride, where a red shirt will check her pass, and let her go on her way. She didn't even want to ride, she just wanted to yell about us going in through the exit, and how we are abusing the system. Now, anyone that looks at Jay, can see he's in a world all his own, and wouldn't be surprised if he's literally reading the future, or talking to aliens. He's awesome. The red shirt tries to calm her down, T is getting upset, because he's a normal 9 year old, and adults yelling is uncool. Jay, making his excited sounds, and waiting for the log to stop, so he can get in. We get in, and as we float away, we still hear Tabitha screaming. The ride ends, and we exit. We figured we would never see Tabitha again, but obviously, as I'm point this, it didn't go that way. Tabitha appeared like a dark brother after making the sacrifice, Elder Scrolls reference, hooting and screaming. She is screaming that just because Jay is in our word, doesn't mean we get extra rights. The screaming causes Jay to let out his super screech. Now anyone that knows autism, knows that autistic kids have superpowers. In Jay's case, it's a supersonic ear shattering high pitched screech that makes your eyes swim, and makes it feel like things in your head are moving that shouldn't. This whole time, Spike was laying on the ground in the froggy position, as bulldogs do, just looking at Tabitha, like she's a rabid dog, but not worth getting up for. As we are being screamed at, I see two officers approaching from behind Tabitha. I smile. My smile must have broke Tabitha, because the hall's off and kicks Spike. This flips my switch, because now my family is literally under attack, and I start to react. Before I could make contact, Tabitha is already in the air being held, carried half dragged away, while being cuffed. Now in front of me, is a well-dressed and pissed looking officer. He tells us he heard the screech, and started heading to it, because they thought a ride broke, or something bad happened. I take the time to unflip that switch, and examine Spike. He's limping and crying. I feel his hips, and feel that his hip is dislocated. I jokingly ask the officer to walk away, and let me get some. He of course has no humor to this, but also can tell I had a career. He asked what happened, and we all explain what happened, from A to Z. He asks if Spike is a service dog. I say yes. He smiles, I'm not in a smile mood, but it catches me off guard. He explains that in Texas, to intentionally injure a service dog, is a felony. 
By this time, Park's security arrived, and issued a trespass order to Tabitha. The officers ask if I want to press charges. I look at Spike and look back, yes, I say. Tabitha, and her tiny mouse-like husband, start to freak out, as Tabitha is loaded onto a golf cart. We hop on a cart too, and leave, to go to the vet. The vet fixed Spike, and all is well. We went back the next day, with Spike in a stroller, no one batted an eye, and everyone loves the bulldog in a stroller. I let people pet him. He's a hoot. And the park is an amazing place. I've been contacted by the investigating officer, and have given depositions. I may have to testify, but I look forward to sitting on the bench with Spike on my lap. EP literally, tried, stole my brother's wheelchair. So, for a little backstory, I went to see my little brother for the Easter holidays. Everything was fine, went shopping to get him a birthday present, and yeah, I had been texted five weeks prior that he has broken his leg and ankles. So I wanted to treat him to a nice day out. To clarify, I was only 18 at the time, and my brother was 12, so I didn't really know what to do in this situation. I take my bro to the shops, get a couple of pens, so I could sign his leg cast. Long story short, we had a good time. And I thought, since I had a small bit of money, why not go to a restaurant? What's the worst that could happen? We get to the restaurant, sit down and eat. It's all good, but then enter EK and EP. My brother had to sit down on the seats without his wheelchair, obviously. This dynamic duo of entitledness sat down on the table next to me. A few minutes later, and the EK says he wants to have a go on the wheelchair for no reason. I tell him that no, sorry but this is for my brother. Then the little dispute happened. EK but why? Me because it's for my brother and no one else? EK but he's sitting fine? Me, mostly, everyone can sit normally kid, so please, can you go sit back down or something, and not bother us? The EK backs down, knowing full well that he wasn't going to get the wheelchair. And I thought that that was the end. Oh boy, how wrong was I? The EP came up to me and just screamed into my face. I could also see the kid with the smuggest look on his face, about how his son couldn't have a go on my brother's wheelchair. And how I was being unfair and mean to his, and I quote, ever so darling boy. And for his final bellow, he screeched, with everyone there looking at him, that I was a minor and I should be giving him the utmost respect and treating him like a god. To save everyone's time, as I'm sure you've heard several exchanges of entitled parents and kids alike, I'll give you a short summary of what happened. Me and the EP argued back and forth, until he has a radicalized idea of stealing the wheelchair. He beelined to the door, but fortunately, staff had seen the whole thing, and stopped him dead in his tracks. He and his brat of a child had been asked to leave, and when they did, oh boy. The father took one last look at me, only to be annoyed because I was laughing my head off at the fact he tried, and failed to steal a bloody wheelchair. He left with defeat and the EK in tears. Anyways, moral of the story, don't try and steal. It's not fun for anyone and normally results to you getting exposed on Reddit. So yeah, that's my rant for the day. Entitled mom gets angry when I won't feed her kids, and she sends me peanut butter cookies as an apology. Hey everyone. This happened years ago, back when I lived in a bad neighborhood, and had a kid. Now I'm financially stable and a bit well off. So, back when I was 26, me and my son, six male, moved to a different neighborhood because rent was cheap, and also because we couldn't afford to live somewhere else. So we had to make do with this apartment, which was around $600 USD. We moved in, me and my son, all the other neighbors were normal, and they kept to themselves. We had a next door neighbor named Karen. Yes, that's her actual name. One day Karen decides to come over, I make a coffee for Karen and me. Then we both sat down and started talking. She introduced herself to me and told me that she works as a nurse from 9 to 5. Then she asks me what do you do? I tell Karen that I work as an HR coordinator and that I work 9 to 5 also. Then she told me that she has 5 boys, and then she tells me one of her sons is diabetic, and then she asks me do you have any kids? I told her yep, I have one son. Then she says does he have any dietary restrictions or health issues? I just tell her he's just allergic to peanuts, and so am I. Then she says okay, I will leave now I have to go do, blah blah. Next afternoon, she sends one of her five boys and asks me do you have any leftover bread? I say yeah here you go, tell your mom I said hi by the way. Next day, she sends her second son, and he asks me do you have any leftover meat? 
I tell him no I'm sorry. 10 minutes later, after I close the door. I hear a loud knocking noise on the door. I hear Karen yell saying open the effing door immediately. I say hi Karen, how are you? She tells me I'm effing angry. Because you starved all of my children. One of my sons is diabetic. Are you trying to kill him you effer? You know, all of my kids were hoping that you would feed them some food, but you're so heartless. I explain to her I don't have any leftover food at home, and I have to feed my kid too. She tells me I don't care. Then I just close the door on her. Next morning, when I open my door, I look on the ground and notice she placed a letter in a small box of cookies, it seems. The letter said I apologize for acting out and being disrespectful, here are some cookies for your cute little boy. Don't worry they are peanut butter free. I think oh wow, free cookies, I guess. Now before I open any food items or such. I make sure it's not made out of peanuts. So I don't have a reaction, nor does my son. As soon as I open the box and see the cookies, it smelled like it was bathed in peanut butter. They were peanut butter cookies. I threw it away. But that made me angry. She made peanut butter cookies purposely knowing that my son is allergic to peanuts. Like the thought of someone making peanut cookies, and then telling that it's not peanuts to a kid that's allergic. That's messed up.